Hey world, Dan Brown here with another edition of EDH Rec Tech, the Magic the Gathering deck building show where we focus on the format known as Elder Dragon Highlander and use the online deck building tool EDH Rec uh, to analyze what the masses are doing well and not so well with given commanders. The way EDH Rec works is they have crowdsourced thousands of deck lists. We take a look at the signature cards for any given commander, uh, that is cards that are disproportionately prevalent in the 99 of decks with a certain commander at the helm and uh, I share with you my opinions as to uh, which of those cards are good and which of those cards are bad to hopefully shed some light on uh, how to have the most fun uh, playing commander because that's the real win condition people it's, it's whoever has the most fun and the second secret about the format that we all know and love is uh, that the, the game doesn't end when the game ends right the meta game is the game and the winner is whoever has the most fun. And that's what we're trying to help you do. Joyra is the commander we're looking at today. She's two blue red with that super cool new frame as of Dominaria. Uh, she's a legendary creature as they all are. Human artificer, artificer, artificer. I'm not sure. I think Ficer. When you, when you, when you cast a historic spell, draw a card. And that's uh, Artifact, Legendary, or Saga. Although in my particular Joyra build, uh, I think that only the first one there is relevant. Only Artifacts. Uh, she's a 3-3 three, three for 4 mana with a crazy cantrip ability. She's going to draw us lots and lots of cards. Not too much else to say. Like, it, it speaks for itself. It, it, well, except it kind of doesn't. I think it's worth just emphasizing that Artifacts are historic. That you, you don't have to resolve them, right? You just have to cast them. And you draw a card for each one, and we naturally, in these colors, will want to be playing lots of mana rocks because we don't have access to better ramp options. So it's just the deck, deck writes itself, in, in my opinion. Uh, but let's take a look at the signature cards here. Here they are. That's what they all look like. Okay, that's what the website looks like when you go there, when you type in edhrec.com. Um, but let, let's, let's take these one at a time. Ethereum Sculptor, two mana, one, two, that makes artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. Super, super, super good in Joyra. Um, it replaces itself if Joyra is in play. We're almost always going to want to be racing to get Joyra onto the battlefield. It's not the sort of deck where we're sitting back and waiting for opponents to expend some answers before we commit our commander to the board. No, no, no. It's a race. And Ethereum Sculptor just greases the gear so, so well. We're running a lot of two mana mana rocks. And let me tell you, a one mana mana rock that produces one mana in a deck that cantrips every time you play one, just, oh man, it's juicy. That is juicy, 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 definitely an auto-include Ethereum Sculptor. Um, same goes for Foundry Inspector. It's only a little bit worse, as in it is one mana more to cast this, but then it does the same thing. Uh, and if Joy was already in play, it draws you a card and replaces itself when you cast it, so there's no real risk of getting blown out. Really, just great. Um, paradoxical outcome. This card hurts my brain. It, it's a tough card to think about. Like, at a glance, you might write it off. Um, four mana instant. Return any number of non-land, non-token permanents you control to your hand. Let's be your hand probably, unless you've taken control of something. And then you draw a card for each card returned to your hand this way. So uh, it's hard to think about because normally you're returning mana rocks, I would assume, in a joy rebuild to your hand, which is like resources on board. Like you're losing mana resources, but you can you can cast this during your main phase if you want and then like have mana floated from those mana rocks or I guess cast it during... Um, the end step of the opponent directly before your turns uh, and, and then you'd lose out on the mana but maybe it's better to just have all the cards in your hand and cast them one after the other to cantrip again hard to think about but I think I, I do think that most of the time you'd be very glad to draw this in Joyra. I think that most of the time there's a way to do it that just creates tremendous, tremendous card advantage and um, really forwards the Wombo Storm general idea that Joyra lends herself to. I, I, I like it. I, I had to think about it, but I like it. Inventor's Fair. Uh, in a two-color deck, you might as well dedicate land slots. I mean, not to... You don't want to get carried away. But you have some uh, some free reign to um, have land slots dedicated to just colorless lands with an upside. And this upside is pretty huge. Uh, four mana crack it, search your library for an artifact card, and put it into your hand. 
Um, you can only do that if you have three or more artifacts, but that is like always in Joyra, so shouldn't be an issue and can help you fetch up whatever you need to. Yes, absolutely, Inventor's Fair should be included. Aetherflux Reservoir, I um, feel a little bit similar about this card in Joyra as I felt about Door to Nothingness in Ramos, except not nearly as extremely. Like, it, you, can act, you will actually probably kill an opponent with this if you run it in Joyra. I just don't know if you'll kill three opponents with this. Um, uh, 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 you, you could build around it, right? If you are a, a, a Johnny really hell-bent on making this a win condition, then Joyra is a pretty good commander for it. Maybe the best commander for it. But I, I, I am not running this in my Joyra deck. Maybe that's a mistake, but I'm just trying to win with damage from creatures, uh, flying evasive creatures, and this just feels like it would be pulling the deck in a few too many directions. Though, yeah, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. In fact, I, I could even be convinced to like it in the comments below. Everflowing Chalice... It just a, This is an auto-include. There's nothing really more to say. You can cast it for zero just to get the cantrip. You can cast it for two, and a two-mana mana rock that enters untapped is really good. You can cast it for four, and it's a slow ring. Uh, Sisse's ring <laughs> it makes two mana for four, and you can tap it that turn. Super good. You, it, you Or you can pour more into it. I mean, you can read the card. You know what it does, and you can. that's just good in Joyra. Right? Paradox Engine with some dollar signs on it. This card is... I'm not sure how expensive it is at the time that you are watching this video. Um, but uh, it, it might be out of the price range that I have set for um, the decks that I'm building for EDH Rec Tech. I am not including cards that cost more than $15. And this one is kind of on the bubble. I, I Actually, I think I do include this in a deck a little bit later in the series. But for now, I'm, I'm not including it in Joyra because not only would it uh, potentially be beyond the budget that I've set, but uh, it, it could be unfun for your opponents. This is a card that is maybe asking to be banned. It wasn't banned the last time and the rules committee had a chance to, so maybe it'll stick around for a little while. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if I would speculate too hard on it because, I, I don't know. That's, message Sheldon. See what he thinks. But, uh, well, and, and yeah, well, my, my maybe a more important point here is that it would be unfun for your opponents in Joyra, right? The, the person who has the most fun wins and the game is not over when the game is over, right? The meta game is the game. And so, like, ah, it, 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 this would win you the like the, the game right away, but it wouldn't win you the meta game right away if you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? It just goes basically infinite with Joyra. Not literally infinite. It's not like one recursive loop, but you cast a mana rock, untap all your other mana rocks, draw a mana rock, cast a mana rock. Like, I guess if you start that chain with only like three cards in hand, you run the risk of drawing three lands eventually, but even then, you've still probably built out your board a ton. This card's just ridiculously good. Like, if you own it and your playgroup would be okay with it, then yeah, you should run it in Joyra. But like, I'm, I'm not going to because. It's just too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> I want to challenge myself. Mishra's Bobble is a good card. I like this card. Uh, it doesn't fit into any category that I have for other cards in my Joyra deck. It's kind of off in its own value, miscellaneous value category uh, because it's just a zero mana mana. Well, it's not even a mana rock. It doesn't generate mana. It's just a zero drop artifact that replaces itself independent of the fact that Joyra makes it replace itself. So it double replaces itself, uh, and that is good. That is good. Uh, the zero mana divination of sorts. Voltaic Key. I thought long and hard about Voltaic Key in my Joyra deck, and while in many, many situations it would be very, very good, right? If you already have a Thran Dynamo in play, Voltaic Key is super crazy bonkers good. Or like a Basalt Monolith, even better. That's kind of, I think, uh, like a peanut butter and jelly type uh, pairing. But uh, when, when considering whether or not to dedicate a deck slot to a card, um, you should always ask yourself, what's the worst case scenario here? And with Voltaic Key, the worst case scenario is that uh, it's in your opening hand with no other mana rocks. I mean, I run a lot of mana rocks in Joyra. That might not happen all that often, but when it does, you might wish that this was something else, a two mana mana rock or something. Or like, say you draw this on turn. I guess you probably wouldn't keep an opening hand without a mana rock, but it might force you to mulligan more. I, I don't know, I don't know. Like, 
I could definitely see an argument for running it. I have chosen not to um, out of my deeply ingrained uh, tendency to play conservatively when I play commander. Generally, playing conservatively is the better way to do it. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's really good. Like, we're not trying to chain together a Rube Goldberg machine of artifact shenanigans in, in this Joyra build. We're just trying to spew artifacts out and generate, like, crazy amounts of mana and then play, like, straightforward flying threats. Um, so, Seed of the Synod. I, okay, I think that what we're running into here are people that are using Joyra as more of a generic artifact commander rather than, like, building super heavily around cantrip 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 um so like this is not cast it is a land you just play it so you don't get the joy of a draw trigger but if you're also doing like Doretti style you know trash for treasure style you know scrap mastery style sacrifice an artifact return an artifact to play from your graveyard then uh yeah this can be free gas for that but um in my joy rebuild it's just a more vulnerable land than normal because it can be destroyed by artifact destruction uh, and for that reason i am not running it i am just running an island instead um basalt monolith yeah this is an auto include i feel like in joyra it just ramps you super far um <laughs> yeah, there's not really much to say. It's just good. This is good in a lot of decks, not just decks that draw you cards when you cast artifacts. Walking Ballista is currently uh, out of the price range for EDH Rec Tech. However, when it rotates out of standard, I have confidence that it will plummet, I think. I'm not much of an expert on, like, modern. I don't think it sees play there. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, So, anyway, if you have a copy, should you run it? Open question, I mean, you can cast it for zero and get the Joyra um, cantrip, but um, it, when, when it does stick to the battlefield, what are you really getting? I don't know, no evasion on a creature of, you know, the, the power and toughness that's not that efficient compared to the mana you pour into it. Uh, there are better ways to remove creatures and or deal damage to opponents' faces than spending, you know, 12 mana to deal 3 damage, but... If there's any deck that can pull it off, Joyra certainly could, because you're playing so, so, so many mana rocks. I am a little tepid. I, I'm a little bit bearish on it, but like could, could see an argument for running it in a, a Joyra build. Uh, I, I would probably not recommend it, though, especially with it at the price point it's at right now. Scrap Trawler, uh, again, similar to the uh, Artifact Land. I think that this is a relic of people who are using Joyra as more of a generic artifact commander with Joyra's ability as an upside rather than like a super duper build around thing. Uh, so I am not running Scrap Trawler in my Joyra build, um, but I can, you know, three mana is not too much and the ability is pretty good to return artifacts from your graveyard. I'm just not doing too much graveyard artifact stuff. Uh, don't know that Joyra necessarily lends herself to that. But being blue in addition to red might still make her a better option than Doretti, etc. Um, Were of Invention is, again, the same exact thing I just said about Scrap Trawler. Same thing that I said about the Artifact Land. I think this is from more generic good stuff Artifact decks. Um, it, it doesn't fit that nicely into what I am trying to do with my Joyra build. Um, Joyra wants to draw lots of cards but doesn't care about any specific card that much it's just a storm that gets scarier and scarier and we have our threats kind of evenly spread out so tutoring up one specific threat isn't that like important um so the war of invention yeah i'd probably better just run more mana rocks that can trip into more potential threats or just like big flying artifact creatures um don't need to waste tempo right searching them up so there you have it those are the signature cards for Joyra. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this Joyra deck that I've put together uh, with an EDH Rec Tech deck tech. There it is. Kill Joy's Artifact Spew. Yeah, Roswell, what do you think about that? My dog's right here. You probably heard her walk by a second ago. What do you think, Roswell? Come here. You want to talk into the microphone? Roswell, come here. Come here, buddy. Oh, she's a little nervous. Oh, she's not sure what I'm doing. Oh, she's... Okay, you you can go keep eating your food. That's fine. All right, kill Joy's Artifact Spew. Let's go. Uh, the idea here is it's a hyper-linear Artifact Spew that gets exponentially scarier each and every turn. You are casting Mana Rocks, which enable you to, in the next turn, 
cast even more mana rocks that enable you to cast even more mana rocks because they all replace themselves so your hand's not getting smaller and then we just run some like artifact creature threats that'll hit the board too that's part of what makes it scarier and scarier the answer to every problem you are liable to encounter is play more mana rocks and draw more cards okay just keep keep on doing that that's that's the name of the game here also we're going to cast joyra as soon as possible this is not the sort of commander deck where you're looking to like sit back and wait for opponents to expend some of their resources before you feel safe putting her out there just just get her out there because you run so many mana rocks that uh, even if she gets dealt with like you can recast her and even if she gets dealt with again you can recast her again and it shouldn't really become too big of an issue okay you don't want to miss opportunities to cantrip get her out there asap so, uh, looking at the fundamentals here, ramp, draw, control, uh, we have an extreme amount of ramp in Joyra. That's, that's why it's in rainbow colors. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have thir 30! 30! We have 30 ramp effects! If we have 30 ramp effects in this deck. It's pretty crazy. Uh, they're all mana rocks. Go figure. I've been, you know, you, you get it, you get it. All right, draw. We have good, good draw but not a number next to it because it's a little hard to, a little different than most decks where you can just be like, there are 15 draw effects in this deck. Uh, no, no cards are included explicitly for card drawing purposes with the exception of paradoxical outcome, but uh, 40, 49, 49 of the cards in this deck can trip with Joy Rain play. Okay, 49 of these cards. That's like, that is half. Half of the cards. 77% of the non-lands in this deck. That's a lot. Uh, the control suite uh, exists, but it, it's below average. That's why it's orange. Uh, 12. Not quite red. Like, it's still a fine number for a deck that's just looking to commit, 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 commit to the board and uh, be pretty aggressive in that way. Um, although... Our actual like win condition is a little more mid-rangey. Uh, the goal here is to ramp into a turn three Joyra, play a lot of rocks, can trip off those rocks, play more rocks, play uh, birds and sticks. That is flying creatures and equipment, and they're all artifacts, so those are all those will all can trip too. Attack with those, play more rocks, more attack, draw everything, attack everything, just do everything. You just just keep doing the same thing. This is a deck that uh, you don't have to think too hard when you're playing it. The options are. Uh, to commit, commit, commit more and more to the board. Hey, hey, I have a question. Um, do you want to support EDH Rec Tech? Do you want to incentivize me to create even more YouTube content so we don't go through another nine month, two year, whatever it might be, dry spell? Uh, well, hey, pay me indirectly by paying Flipside Gaming for their very valuable service of delivering magic cards to your door. They're just an LGS, but they're trying to build out an online presence, and uh, they hit me up, and I felt like it seemed like a good thing to do here, so uh, use the promo code POGO, P-O-G-O, and uh, I'll get a little bit of whatever you buy through them. Help support me, help support them, super duper. Okay, easy peasy, hunky dory, holy moly. Send me some other things too uh if you want to support future content not edh rec tech i'll have to call this something different because it won't be quite the same format but um I, I i want bottom up deck building ideas edh rec tech is very top down right we start by looking at a commander and then we build around that commander um for content after this i would like to start with a cool card synergy and then build up around that and then maybe decide a commander once I've decided colors or something. So uh, if you know of, <laughs> I'm sure you do, if you have a favorite, let's say, card synergy that you'd like to see my take on a deck built around that synergy, uh, go ahead and just explain it. Send me an email, danbrownuniverse at gmail.com. All right, cool, cool. Enough business. Let's get back to, um, well, more business, but deck the, the business of EDH Rec Tech rather than the business of my business. Here we go! First up, we'll look at the mana base. Pretty simple here in two colors. Uh, first in alphabetical order is Cascade Bluffs. Just a standard uh, blue-red filter land. Some of these filter lands do cost more than the $15 price cap I have on cards in the decks. I make an EDH rec tech, but uh, this one, at least at the time of filming, uh, was below 15 So very good land if you own them or can afford them. Uh, Command Tower, you know what that does. Inventor's Fair. Um, in two colors, we have uh, a few deck slots. I guess in here I'm only running 
two non-basic lands. You could probably squeeze in one or two more if you have some cool ones in your collection. But Inventor's Fair uh, just makes a lot of sense. We're running an artifact deck. Um, you can gain some life off of artifacts. It enters untapped and immediately makes it colorless, which, again, in two colors usually won't bite us in the butt. Usually we won't be hurting for whatever color mana this isn't producing, right? Uh, and then four, tap, sack, uh, search for an artifact and put it in your hand. If you have three or more, which uh, Joyra almost always will, just, yeah, great utility in a land. Nice to have effects stapled to things that you can play one of per turn and make mana. Um, then we have Islands, the best card ever printed. I, I think I've said that Soul Ring was the best card ever printed, but that's not counting Island. Island lets you play blue spells, which makes it the best. The top three cards of all time are Island, number one, Soul Ring, number two, and Storm Crow, number three. Um... Mountain, not as good as Island, but it is the basic land that produces red, which is one of our colors. So definitely worth considering running some islands and mountains in your blue-red decks out there. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that brings us to our last four lands. Uh, we have Reliquary Tower. Um, yeah, just nice to not have a maximum hand size. I, I don't run Reliquary Tower in every deck even if it's only one or two or, you know, three colors and, and we don't need to lean on our mana base super heavily for color fixing. Uh, just because sometimes it is nice to be able to pitch things to the graveyard if you have a graveyard strategy. Yeah, like I would never run a Reliquary Tower, uh, probably, in a Marin deck or in an Alicia deck because, you know, sometimes you don't want anger to be in your hand. Also, uh, if you hear my cat playing with a toy, yeah, my cat has some major zoomies right now. Uh, so if you're hearing something in the background, that's that's what that is. Yeah, Rosa, she's uh, she's have she's having a great time. I'm talking, which oh yep, she just jumped up right behind me. Yep, there she is. What do you think, Rose? <laughs> I have to be careful when she does that, so that she doesn't land on my shoulders with claws fully extended. I've gotten a few, a few scritchy scratches. Uh, it, well, sorry, where were we? Magic the Gathering, fun game. Um, Shivan Reef, Painland. Super good. Spire Bluff Canal. Uh, yeah, again, kind of my... The, the threshold for being good enough to include in a mana base in you know these decks for EDH Rec Tech for me is usually that it produces two or more colors and can enter untapped. Eh, I take that. If, if it produces two colors and not more than two colors, then it needs to be able to enter untapped. We can make some exceptions in decks that run more colors um, if we really need the fixing. And then finally, Sulphur Falls pretty standard it's a check land uh and that's it 36 lands it's fewer lands than normal just because joyra's curve is so low and we are running so many artifact ramp spells as you will see very soon well what do you know here are the ramp spells uh first in alphabetical order basalt monolith uh i like i like this well okay all right bigger picture let's take a step back all that i've ever really wanted to do in a game of magic the gathering you know, bigger picture even than EDH specifically, is to play mana rocks and then draw cards off of those mana rocks, to draw into more mana rocks, to then play those more mana rocks and draw more cards and just play more mana rocks. And Joyra, oh man, she, she enables that. And it's just, it's drawing cards and playing mana rocks are my two favorite things in Commander. And Joyra uh, staples those two things together so, so nicely. So... These are all just value mana rocks, right? Uh, Basalt Monolith doesn't lose you mana on the turn, which is super important in Joyra for keeping her kind of like artifact spew stormy thing going. Um, Coalition Relic, uh, it does lose you mana on the turn, but just a three mana mana rock that can net you two mana on any you know critical turn. Uh, very good. Cold Steel Heart, uh, just a two mana mana rock. It doesn't get you any mana for the turn, but two mana, uh, hard to argue with that price for a... Um, ramp spell, Basalt Monolith's image glitching out right there. Let me fix that. Uh, Commander Sphere, you have Staple, Darksteel Ingot. You know, you've seen these cards before. Everflowing Chalice, really like it because, you know, you can pay 10 mana to have it tap for 5. And often in Joyra, actually, you'll be able to do things like that. So having utility, if nothing else, it's a 2 mana mana rock. Um, Felwer Stone, 2 mana mana rock. Fire Diamond, same thing. Uh, okay, Fractured Power Stone, very overlooked card. Uh, in Commander because of its second ability. Not relevant, although I will point out it is legal. You you are allowed to roll the plane or die. It doesn't do anything if you're not playing a game of plane chase. But 
for for giggles, y- you are allowed. It's it's okay. All right, we'll move on. It's a two mana mana rock that many people haven't heard of. It doesn't even enter tapped. You can use it right away. Uh, Gilded Lotus, great to see a reprint there. Made it EDH Rec Tech legal. <laughs> Dropped its price below fifteen bucks. Very cool. Guardian Idol, two mana mana rock. Hedron Archive. Uh, it's a slow ring. That is to say, a, a soul ring for four with the. Um, Draw two cards ability. It can, in a pinch, replace itself. And late game often does. Is it Cluestone? Is it, though? Is it really? You know, <laughs> it replaces itself. Is it Kirun? Is is it? Is it Kirun here? Is is this? Uh... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one of those. Um, is it Signet, though? Is it Signet? Are you sure? Is it? Uh, we have a Mind Stone. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't even necessarily need to. I don't need to go over all of these by name. Uh, yeah, these are EDH staples. You've seen them. It's just we happen to put them all in the same deck here. Uh, Star Compass isn't quite as common, although maybe more so these days. Uh, another slow ring here. Uh, yeah, Vessel of Endless Rest has some neat tech stapled to it. Being able to uh, mess with graveyard strategies stapled to a mana rock is uh, fun. Um, Urgolem's Eye, another slow ring. Uh, uh, okay, all right. I have come up with a nickname for Unstable Obelisk, and I would uh, politely motion here that we all just adopt it. Uh, it is the nickname that I am the most proud of out of all of the nicknames I've come up with for magic cards. This is, brace yourselves, this is the uh, Wobble Obble, right? Because it's an obelisk and it's unstable, so it wobbles. It's a Wobble Obble, okay? You, you, you're you free to use that. Go ahead and use that in your next game. Also, it's really good. <laughs> if you're not playing this card in any of your decks, I know I know you guys, if you have played any amount of Commander and bought any amount of, like, product, you likely have, like, one of these floating around in your collection. If you're not running it, find a deck to run it in. I mean, seven mana is steep to destroy a permanent, but it's, like, it's not, that's just an upside. It's a mana rock. Like, that's all you really need. If, even if it was three mana to tap for a colorless, like, not the greatest ratio, but, like, still totally playable. The fact that you can blow up any permanent, like, late game, you can even put this under a few other mana rocks, you know, don't, don't obstruct it, right? But, you know, people stack cards up, and if an opponent forgets it's there, like, you know, that's that's their fault for not checking before they cast their, you know, game, game-ending game threat. Uh, wobble Obble, super good, especially if you're in colors that uh, don't have great access to control. This is not the last time you're going to see this. In, te- in ED, sorry, I almost said tech, 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 tech. In EDH rec tech, uh, Thrandy- yeah, you've, you know Thran Dynamo, Thought Vessel, very good. Uh, and then, okay, in terms of creature based ramp, um, Ethereum Sculptor and Foundry Inspector are both just so good in our little Wombo Storm Mana Rock thing we have going on with Joyra. Um, you know, there's you can sort of think of them like Mana Rocks that you use multiple times per turn. You, you use them as many times as you cast artifact spells in a turn. And then finally, Palladium Mirror, just another. Slow ring. It's like a worn power stone with legs, uh, which makes it slightly less good, but a worn power stone is still very, very, very good. Which highlights just how ridiculously good soul ring is. I mean, I, if if you haven't wrapped your, if, if you've just like sort of as a reflex because people in your playgroup run soul ring in every deck, never stop to think about this card right here. What? How? There's not even a one mana mana rock for one. Like, how is this a good idea? I, it's it's so good. It's so good. So good that they should ban it so we all just have one more deck slot. Unpopular EDH opinion. And I don't even really believe it. I'm just kind of trolling. Taking a look at the control suite here, we have 12 cards. Uh, Not as many as most decks that I would play that at least have blue in them. And that's because we're going for, you know, kind of a stormy artifact spewy strategy. And we're cycling through our deck so quickly in theory, if if we can keep Joyra in play at least, that um, we can often run into more of these. We have better card draw. In spite of no dedicated card draw effects, right? Because we're leaning pretty heavily on Joyra. But we can typically draw enough cards off of Joyra that, you know, we reliably have one or two of these in hand. Um, I also kind of threw these together. I just noticed that I'm not running counter spell. Like, I'm running Dissolve over a, a regular old counter spell. That's probably not smart, but uh, I built 12 of these decks, and the perfect is the enemy of the good, so we're just going to go with what I have here right now. Arcane Denial, though, I, I would run this over counter spell. In Commander, the the lack of color specificity for the one generic mana is worth letting our opponents draw two cards. Not to mention that we also draw a card. This is a counterspell for two that replaces itself. We don't care as much in multiplayer 
about our opponent drawing two cards um, at the beginning of their next upkeep. Just because when thinking of card disadvantage in EDH, you, you kind of have to divide the card draw that your opponents do by the total number of opponents you have. And so you are kind of you know coming out ahead in this in a way. There are other ways to kind of look at it. I've said this a few times. I'll probably say it more over the course of EDH rec tech. But, uh, you know, if you're most threatening opponent is the one drawing those two cards, then, you know, maybe a, a regular old counterspell would be strictly better. But I digress. I like Arcane Denial a lot. Uh, if you don't have a few copies, it's a common. Pick it up. Chaos Warp, debatably the best removal spell in Commander. Cyclonic Rift, um, you know, maybe I should redact that and say that uh, Chaos Warp is the best single target removal spell in Commander. Cyclonic Rift, debatably the best mass removal spell in Commander or a single target spell in a pinch. Um, Disallow, really great card. Just, it's so good. Dissipate, yeah, maybe replace this with a regular counterspell. Exiling a counterspell is not bad. I would replace Dissolve first. Um, evacuation, uh, you know, it's a board wipe option. It's a way to, I, I don't know, it's 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 good to have mass removal, even if it's just bounce. Get a big old tempo swing in there. Uh, oh, and it's not so bad in Joyra, too, because if you're returning an artifact creature of your own to your hand, you are getting additional card draw off of it. So, you know, come out a little bit of a head. A little bit ahead of uh, most opponents. Uh, Mystic Confluence is just super versatile. Uh, it can be a counter spell if you need it, or it can draw you three cards, or you know it can do some combination of that and unsummoning. Uh, Swan Song is cool. Cool to just shoot down a spell for one blue mana. People don't see it coming. Uh, Rapid Hybridization and Pongify. Same basic effect. One mana to shoot down any creature, which is the most common type of threat you're going to need to answer. And then Negate. You know, creatures and non-creatures. It's kind of like a 50-50 split between, you know, the uh, types of threats you're going to have to deal with. So Negate will catch whatever Pongify and Rapid Hybrid don't. Here we have a section that I call uh, clothes and miscellaneous value. Clothes being any sort of accessory that uh, our creatures might uh, put on their person. Uh, <laughs> and miscellaneous value, just, I mean, yeah, it's just miscellaneous value that doesn't fit neatly into any other category. Um, first up is Bloodforged Battle Axe, in alphabetical order, anyway. Uh, when it comes to equipment, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I don't care so much about the mana cost, usually. Uh, if I'm running equipment in a deck, it's probably you know some part of my win condition, and we're thinking about late game. I'm just thinking about the total impact on the board I'm getting in, ex in exchange for the number of cards it is, not so much the number of mana it, it is. Uh, so Bloodforged Battle Axe just so happens to cost one mana and have an equip cost of two. But what I care much more about is the fact that there is no limit as to how much of a power boost this can ultimately give in a late game. You know, if we equip it to multiple creatures, we get all sorts of copies really quickly and can make our uh, board pretty stacked, um, given, given you know, enough turns. It, it, it provides inevitability, right? Imperial Plate... <laughs> I think I, I think that's how you say that. Imperial? Imperial? Weird. It's a weird word. I don't know. Didn't look it up beforehand. Uh, same basic thing. You know, the fact that it costs two mana and two mana uh, is less relevant than the fact that it could be giving, you know, a plus seven, plus seven boost. Maybe a bigger than that boost. Uh, we do run Reliquary Tower in this deck. Um, Lightning Greaves, standard, protect Joyra, you know, locks it on Warhammer, um, big boost and lifelink is pseudo card advantage. If you live longer, you draw more cards. <laughs> it's funny, I, I have ingrained card draw in my head so much that I, I almost value it more than surviving longer into the game. <laughs> uh, Swift Foot Boots, same thing as Lightning Greaves, EDH staple, you know what it does. Slayer's Plate. Um, yeah, just in one equipment, it gives a plus four boost, which is pretty good. And Joyra is a human, so you know that's relevant. Uh, Sigil of Distinction, now this is juicy. With all of the mana rocks we're running, slap this on a flyer, it's a game-ending threat. You know, comes into play with X-Charge counter, X-Charge counters on it and gives our Ornithopter plus, I don't know, 15-15 swinging for lethal, question mark. Um, Mishra's Bobble, this is not clothes, this is value. It, it doesn't ramp us at all, uh, and there aren't enough dedicated card draw effects to merit, uh, uh, you know, a, a card draw section of this deck tech. So it's basically just a way to cast an artifact for zero and then draw two cards, a two mana divination. 
not too bad. It does depend on Joyra being in play, but in this deck in particular, Joyra will hopefully be in play very frequently. Um, Paradoxical Outcome, I was talking about this earlier. Again, uh, this is a card draw effect, but it and Mishra's Baba would be the only like dedicated card draw effect in the deck. So including it here in Miscellaneous Value instead. Uh, it, it, it hurts your brain to think about this card, but once you do in the context of a Joyra deck, you realize that there are multiple ways that this can be good. You know, cast it on an end step, cast it during your main phase. You know, uh, you try to net mana off of it, or you know, I mean, it's a good, good early game, good late game. It's you know, it's it's just a very good utility card. There are about a thousand different ways this can be good. Um, so we're running it, and finally, we've got a section I call birds. These are how we try to win. They are flyers. They are usually artifacts, so they will draw us cards, and if they're not artifacts themselves, they interact with artifacts in a cool way. Uh, first up, Clockwork Dragon. I, I, I like this card <laughs> uh, for punchy battlecruiser decks, especially artifact-based decks that are able to generate lots and lots and lots of surplus mana. Um, that can turn this into a, a, a game-ending threat potentially pretty quickly because for three mana, you can put another plus one plus one counter on it. Um, don't care so much about removing a counter because, again, three mana is not that much to ask for at the point in the game where we, you know, care enough to cast a clockwork dragon Esperzoa, uh four power on a flying creature for three mana usually the uh upkeep bounce trigger would be a deal breaker but in joyra that's great that's another artifact that we can cast to draw a card uh so it, it, it's not a it's not a downside it's upside that's a feature not a bug as they say hellkite igniter one of the few creature spells in the deck that uh it does not trigger Joyra on cast, but to make up for it, it has it has haste and can probably, you know, one or two shot an opponent. Uh it it is uh yeah, it's a good good way to close out a game in a battle cruiser punchy meta. Hellkite Tyrant, similar thing, uh, does not have haste, but can win you the game the turn after it comes into play regardless if uh you have twenty or more artifacts, which is not a reach in this Joyra deck. Uh, could definitely win some games that way. Have a Hovermer. So yeah, they're kind of two different types of birds. We're running big birds and little birds. We don't like kind of middling sized birds. Eh, maybe a few. But heavy priority on birds that are also artifacts that will trigger Joyra on cast. So Flying Vigilance 1, 2. Excellent body to slap an equipment on and uh, start punching for some serious chunks of life. Junk Diver, again, triggers Joyra and gets some extra value when it dies. Don't have to think too much harder than that. Slap an equipment on it. In good shape. Molten Steel Dragon, again, just a big punchy artifact threat. Uh, draws a card off of Joyra. Makes sense. Ornithopter, it just feels so good to put an equipment on Ornithopter and start chipping away. It's just like, I attack you with my kite. <laughs> if you kill a person with your kite, feels pretty good. Steel Hell Kite. Speaking of kites, wow, that was an accident. Did not plan for that. Maybe shouldn't have admitted that I didn't plan for that. Maybe I just ruined the moment. Kite to kite. I've already been talking about kites too long. Steel Hell Kite. Big, punchy artifact threat that is like pseudo control also if it gets through. Very good. Snare Thopter. I just love haste, right? Uh, it, it, it has evasion flying. It has haste. It's an artifact that triggers Joyra. Put an equipment on it. It's a threat. Nothing to hate there. Sharding Sphinx. <laughs> say that slowly. Sharding Sphinx. Don't say it too quickly, all right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it's a flying threat that creates more flying threats. Uh, we have nothing against that and pilgrim's eye once again it's a cheap flying threat triggers joy right gets another card in our hand by searching our library yeah just yeah nope, yeah it's real good those are our birds that's our deck let's goldfish it let's take a look at how joy plays we will draw our opening hand i like what i see lands and mana rocks and lands and mana rocks that's all we need we got a two two mana mana rock is very nice uh let's get to it turn one we will draw a blood forged battle axe okay yeah there's a turn one play uh if i mean maybe we want to sit back on the battle axe and um wait until joyra is in play so that we can get the draw trigger uh, yeah you know what i think that actually is probably the right thing to do so we just won't do anything turn one turn two i will draw pilgrim's eye not bad play an island tap two get a 
fractured power stone, and we're gonna roll the plane and die. All right, turn three. Untap, draw a worn power stone. Very interesting. Play a mountain. Uh, I think the right play here, unlike most other decks, where you always want to ramp before doing other things. Uh, we're just gonna race to get a turn three Joyra. That's the plan. Uh, turn four, untap, draw a land. Exactly what I was hoping to draw. We have five mana available to us. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's go ahead and for one, two, three, cast a Pilgrim's Eye. We're gonna want that flyer. We'll draw from Joyra. Pilgrim's Eye will come into play. We will search for a land. I'm gonna snag an island. Put that into our hand here. And then for one, I will drop a Bloodforged Battle Axe. We will draw off of that, get a Wobble Wobble, put this into play, and uh, that's gonna be that. I guess there's an argument that I could have played more mana rocks first and maybe wound up, wind up tapping all of my mana. But, you know, just to give you a general idea of what the deck does, go to turn five, untap. I'm also moving a little quick here for um, commentary purposes. Uh, I know we've all got places to go and people to see. Play our island, we have six mana, sitting out there and a paradoxical outcome interesting choices to be made probably want to play for one two three four a thran dynamo we will draw snare thopter get this in there oopsies get that in there so paradoxical outcome costs this much and the Bloodforged Battle Axe costs two to equip. Uh, maybe, mm, so d d maybe we hold off on the Paradoxical Outcome. It's not like we're hurting for uh, cards in hand at this moment. We have seven. It might be better to wait until we have just all the mana in the world to uh, pour into it. So for one, two, three, yeah, drop a Basalt Monolith. Why not? For some reason it skipped the stack entirely. That's okay. We'll get a Mountain. Um, already played our land for tournament. We have one, two, three, four mana available still. Um, yeah, why not? Why not just spend the Basalt Monolith? Get a free, uh, get a free card draw off of it. Three for a Coalition Relic. I will draw an Evacuation. Coalition Relic will come into play. That leaves us with one, two, three mana up. Probably want to equip the Bloodforged Battle Axe. Uh, so for one, two, three. No, we don't want to do it that way. Um, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and just equip the Bloodforged Battle Axe as it is there. Attach it to our Pilgrim's Eye, make the power toughness a 3-1, uh, and we will be moving to combat and swinging for three, making a copy of Bloodforged Battle Axe, uh, which will sit out there um, end of the turn before ours. Uh, we will put a charge counter on Coalition Relic. We will move to our turn, turn six. Untap! Ooh, that's a big untap. Draw a Mind Stone main phase. Go ahead and, I guess, organize my mana rocks. Just clear out. Clear out a little room over there. Um, first things first, we will remove a counter from Coalition Relic and get a blue mana floating over there. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 mana available to us. <laughs> I mean, I think we just keep drawing and drawing and drawing, trying to hit some sort of an equipment uh, that we can s stick on the Pilgrim's Eye, if nothing else. Um, let's see, so for one, two, three, whoop, that's more mana than we intended to float. One, two, three, leave one colorless floating here and uh, drop a Mind Stone. We will draw an island. We will let the Mind Stone come into play. We will play our land for turn. We... For one, two, and then I guess with the one we have floating, uh, play a Wobble Wobble, draw a card, it is a land, this will come into play. We currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana up for the Wobble Wobble, plus three. Let's go ahead and use uh, one, two, to equip this Bloodforged Battle Axe to the Pilgrim's Eye, making it a 5-1. Five, 5-1. One. Five, one. Uh, we will 
go ahead and move to combat, attack, poke someone for five. We'll get two copies of the Bloodforged Battle Axe. Uh, second main phase. Like I said, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana available potentially in case we want to fire off that Wobble Wobble. Can also fire off an Evacuation. This would be a good turn uh, potentially to um, fire off of a Paradoxical Outcome on the end step before our turn. Uh, you know, I'm going to pump the brakes there. Uh, but the deck just continues to do this and hopefully we hit more scary equipments uh, We can play more you know, flying artifact threats with those equipments attached to them uh, But yeah, just a battle cruiser artifact spew sort of a game where we get more and more mana and more and more agency And uh, you know, we don't love board wipes, but what can you do? We can rebuild pretty quickly. We have a lot of mana rocks, so uh, that's the deck Thank you for watching EDH Rec Tech Episode 3. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Pogo Bat Gaming. Be sure to subscribe. Check out the links in the description and call your mother. It's been a week since she's heard from you. She hasn't heard from you since the last episode of EDH Rec Tech. I'm sure she's wondering how you're doing. That's more a reminder to myself than to you guys, but if you want to use it too, uh, great. Great anyway. Um, good luck and have fun.